Hi, I'm, I'm Chris Lynch, and this is the Hemi Anechoic Chamber. It's about 10 dB below the threshold of hearing in here, and it absorbs sound everywhere. And you can do cool things with sound like this. Or like this. Or this. Who's your daddy? Oh, I'm just kidding. Let's fly, let's fly away. Welcome to another episode of Fast Forward. Right now, I'm cruising at Mach 0.925, 51,000 feet in the air in a G650, the latest and greatest jet to come out of Gulfstream in Savannah. And check this baby out. The passenger cabin has every state-of-the-art gadget you could dream up. I mean, <clears throat> okay. Full disclosure, this is footage Gulfstream gave us, but maybe if I do a nice job on the rest of this video, they'll take me up for a ride. So let's get started by learning a little more about Gulfstream. Gulfstream creates a fleet of aircraft starting from the G150 to the G650. We design them, we develop them, we manufacture them, we sell them, and we also maintain them when they're out in the field. Here at Gulfstream in Savannah, there are roughly 7,500 employees over the whole company across the world. There are about 12,000. So tell me more about that G650 we saw earlier. It has the most range, flies the fastest, has the largest cabin, most comfortable. I mean, it's the epitome of business aviation. It goes Mach decimal 925. Okay, there we go again with that Mach thing. How about a teachable moment on what the terms Mach and supersonic mean? Mach is just a uh, airspeed. It's just like in cars we have miles per hour. Well, jets go by Mach speed. It varies by altitude, by temperature, but Mach is the speed of sound. And by the way, Mach speed is named in honor of Austrian physicist Ernst Mach, who used math to predict what would happen to objects moving at supersonic speeds, which leads us to supersonic. The word sonic basically means having a speed equal to sound. So when you cross Mach 1, that's called going supersonic. Um, you're going faster than the speed of sound. OK, tell me more about what you do here. I'm a college co-op in engineering. What that means is I rotate through a lot of different departments in Gulfstream. So I work here a semester, and then I go back to school for a semester. I'm an acoustics engineer here at Gulfstream, and it's my job to test everything that goes on the airplane to determine how well it blocks the sound. I actually work on the actual airplane itself. Anytime there's a new product, we get the first five airplanes. Uh, we walk them through the certification process to make sure they're safe to fly and they meet all the different regulations. I am currently working in the advanced programs department, working on the next generation aircraft. Um, I can't really talk to, about it too much. We are working on new aircraft. You guys hopefully will be seeing what I'm working on in a couple years. Pretty exciting stuff. I'm sales engineering, answering the technical questions, helping customers decide which airplanes to buy. And what'd you do before this? I was a corporate pilot. Uh, seriously? That's right, I'm a jet pilot. Then this is a great time to find out how airplanes fly. Almost all aircraft have a similar wing shape. You can see that the upper surface is curved more than the lower surface. This is intentional. Chris is talking about something called Bernoulli's Principle. As an airplane wing slices through a column of air, the air going over the top of the wing has to take a longer path than the air below. Because air is elastic, it'll meet the air on the other side. So the air going over the top has to move faster. Bernoulli's principle dictates that the air moving faster will have a lower pressure than the air moving slower. And that lower pressure actually sucks the plane up in the air. But does everyone here have to know how planes fly? We provide hundreds of career opportunities from entry level, fresh out of high school, all the way up to the seasoned veteran. We have nurses, we have lawyers. Finance people, and then you have people who actually build the aircraft, people who get to use their hands and use tools on a daily basis, interior designers, people who actually make the cabinetry, do woodworking. It takes hundreds and hundreds of people coming together working together to get this thing put together. Okay, and those hundreds of people are obviously pretty smart. But let's be honest, anyone who's ever sat in a high school math class thinks they're never gonna use that stuff. What do you say to that? I'd say you might be right, but for a small investment on your part, you might be wrong. I make a very good living doing what I do, and I couldn't do it if I didn't have a strong science and a math background. 
The one great thing about what I do, it's pretty much the same thing I did in high school. The difference between then and now, I get to do it on the world's fastest, largest, best airplane out there. It's not a bad deal, and you get paid for it. Oh man, I struggled with English so bad. <laughs> and that may have been just because I came from two Hispanic parents and they didn't speak English well themselves, but my English was horrible and when it came to math, it just kind of clicked, really. Okay, maybe, but what if math just doesn't click for me? You just gotta make sure that you are willing to go out, get the tutoring you need if you don't understand something. It's just part of going to school and part of something you have to do. Turn off the television and start reading everything you can about what you're interested in. Yes, you're not gonna be cool, you're not gonna know what the latest TV show or movie is or video game, but you will be successful because you'll know so much more than the competition. Being successful does sound good. It's working here. Speaking of that, what is the best thing about working here? We are building the most advanced business jets in the world. And when you see something that you've designed and manufactured, it really just takes your breath away. The coolest part of my job is just the ability to come up with an idea and work on it and work hard at it and actually see it get implemented on the aircraft. And now you have a piece of the airplane, you'll always have a piece of the airplane with your name on it. I've always wanted a plane with my name on it. I could actually get it here. Okay, this is pretty amazing stuff, but I wanna raise the stakes. So let's call this last question, hey Gulfstream, blow my mind. Let's get to it. We just don't manufacture aircraft. We change people's lives. Well done. Anyone else? What I didn't realize before I took this job is when you fly to 51,000 feet, you can actually see the curvature of the Earth through the window. And not many people get to see that, especially not in something they help build. Really nice. Next. What cooler thing than being able to design an airplane, in my opinion. So that's kind of what hooked me is just the thought, like, wow, somebody's got to build those. Why, why couldn't it be me? Excellent. Brandy, fly us home. In high school, I was probably made fun of for being like the nerd and whatnot, but now that I've gone through school and I'm applying it, I go back home and I am the awesome person that's gone to do and done engineering. Even though I'm a girl and even though I like girl things too, and I work with a bunch of guys and a bunch of, we're not all geeks, I promise. Uh, <laughs> you work with all different types of people and I have a blast doing what I do. Having a blast at what you do reminds me a lot of this job. Just wish I had my name on that G650. I'll work on that and see you on the next episode of Fast Forward.